Oh, hi, we are making clouds. Louis Dumont shared his lovely cloud shader on Twitter, which served as a great base for my own shader. Today I will walk you through the shader and its options. A link to his tweet with the original shader version will be in the description. In case that's all you're looking for, great, the tutorial is over. Go ahead, download it and have fun. Bye! Okay, since you're watching this video, I assume you are interested in how I create my clouds usually. So, first of all, lighting is key. That's why you might want to get a good lighting setup before working with this shader, because it will heavily influence the look of your final scene. I have a basic gradient setup for a sky here and a sunlight with a strength of 8, an angle of 11.4 degrees and the peach tint. I encourage you to play with the values for your scene and find out what looks best to you. But before you can mess around with the settings in detail, you should of course have something to light in your scene. I'll usually start with a basic icosphere and you can subdivide it as much as you want. Just don't go too high when you're looking for a low poly cloud. It won't be necessary. When you have your sphere selected, add a displacement modifier and create a new texture for it. Go to the texture tab by clicking the icon on the right and set the type to something you like. I use clouds for most of the time and especially in this case it's really fitting. Of course you can play around with the other settings. For some cloud variation I set the texture coordinates to global and adjust the strength to something I like. To break up the cloud's topology add a decimate modifier and turn down the value. Again there's no wrong or right here, choose what looks best to your eye. Now that you have your base part, you can shape your clouds. Duplicate the sphere and move and size it until you're happy with the cloud. For some better organization, I recommend the add-on Quick Instances Groups to group different clouds and use them as instances in your scene. Most of the time, I don't have much more than 5 different clouds in my scenes, I just rotate them to make them look diverse. If you want to go for a look closer to what Louis did in the scene he tweeted, you could use either more subdivided spheres or even better, meta balls. You'll see the difference when shading these soon. If this shader setup looks intimidating to you, don't worry, most of it is not even needed for what I showed you in my example. Since we are working with a low poly cloud, the displacement created with these textures is redundant or even unnecessary. Let me show you. When I compare these two cloud types, one with a low poly count and displacement modifier and one with a high poly count and no displacement, you can currently see that the low poly clouds get their texture from the displacement modifier, whereas the smooth spheres still look smooth, even though we have a displacement setup in our shader. Why is that? Because the material doesn't know it's supposed to actually displace the geometry of our shape. To fix that, go to the material settings and change the displacement type to displacement and bump or displacement only. This feature is disabled by default because it's intense to calculate and takes up a lot of processing power, so only use it in a case where you need it. As soon as I do this, the metaball cloud will get a lot of texture while the low poly cloud just changes shape without any added texture. And this is why this is pretty pointless since we already displaced the cloud quote unquote manually by adding the modifier. Of course, you are free to choose whether you want to use one way to add displacement or the other. As far as I know, both are equally fast while rendering, but the modifier gives you more control while working with the unrendered shape in the viewport. This setup in particular is more suitable for higher poly count like we have with the Metapole Cloud. The shader can be split into four parts mainly. The first part are the nodes used for mapping. Then we have the texture nodes with all nodes that are necessary to combine them, the nodes for displacement and the volume and density group. Using the position output from the geometry node instead of the texture coordinate makes the texture randomized for each new object based on its global position. Then we have the Voronoi texture, which I use for some density variation inside the clouds. The main purpose is to create the bubbly displacement that you can see here. The other three textures are mainly to break up the Voronoi texture with some randomness here and there, as well as something Louis called the flaky bits. Those are the fine and feathery flakes that make the clouds look, well, kinda cloudy. In case you're wondering, it's just a renamed Musgrave texture. All of these are combined using different math operations to get the final displacement result. 
The volume itself is set up pretty simple with a basic volume scatter added on top of a volume absorption shader. Play around with the density and anisotropy setting to get the perfect result for your cloud size and scene.